Hello, hello to you, my fellow printed dweebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All of the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, a city with a disturbing amount of Irish pubs. Here's what's going on 3D printing right now. We got a few new things in the shop, starting with Cheaty Tech's new X plus 4 printer. This is Cheaty Tech's newest printer with a build volume of 305 by 305 by 280 with Core XY kinematics, clipper firmware, max speed of 600 millimeters per second and acceleration of 20K and a max hot end temperature of 370 degrees. It also has a 400 watt heating chamber, so filaments like ABS, polycarbonate and nylon are no problem here. In fact, it is so impressive that their ad includes this very impressed man. There are a few things that set this printer apart. So obviously the temperature capabilities. This is not for everyone, but those who frequently use high temp and high strength materials, this is going to be really useful for you. The other thing to note is the filament cutter. So normally when you change filament, you have to heat up the hot end, wait for the filament to melt and then yank it out. But with the cutter, you can cut it, remove it, put new filament in and then let it heat up and extrude automatically. No waiting for a heat up. And there will apparently be an AMS type device in the new year. Interesting stuff, I'm impressed. Next up is the new Anycubic Photon Mono printer. This is the Photon Mono 4, a compact MSLA printer with a 10K resolution. The small build area and high resolution LCD give you a 17 by 17 micrometer pixel size. It's pretty, pretty okay. It has all the usual accruements, self-check resin detection, failed print detection. There is nothing exceptionally revolutionary about this printer, but when you combine the 17 micrometer pixel size with the price, that's where this becomes interesting because it is only 189 euro in the shop right now. So for anyone interested in dipping their toes in resin printing, this might be right up your alley. We also got E3D's Diamondback hot end for the Bamboo Lab P1 and X1 series. For anyone wanting to get the ultimate upgrade for composite and abrasive filaments on their Bamboo Lab printer, this is the one to get. It uses a polycrystalline diamond tip to withstand erosion from things like carbon fiber and glass fiber filament. Great for the professionals out there. In other news, Lychee are getting into the 3D model subscription service. Apparently working with top model designers to offer a library of 3D models, this is provided as an extension to a lychee slicer and aims at a seamless workflow. A lot of people are getting into the model subscription service these days. In Raspberry Pi news, they are extending their hacking challenge and bounty from $10,000 to $20,000. This is a challenge to bypass the security on their RP2350 microcontroller. If anyone has the audacity and talent to breach their security system, they will give you a big wad of cash. Go nuts. On the more industrial side of 3D printing, Markforge, the popular industrial 3D printer manufacturer, have been ordered to pay $17 million in reparations to continuous composites as part of a patent infringement lawsuit. For those unaware, Markforge have become quite popular with their continuous carbon fiber filament. This is where a single strand of carbon fiber runs through the entire filament spool instead of the more popular method of using chopped carbon fiber interspersed throughout the plastic. This makes the filament considerably stronger in terms of tensile strength, approaching the strength of aluminium parts. We're experiencing a very litigious season right now. Okay, that about does it for this month. As always, links to all of the stories and products mentioned are down below. We'll be back with another video next week, so tune in and we'll see you guys then. Later.